Good morning. It's March 4th, and this is your Daily Brief in Science. Here's everything you need to know. Tonight, under the stars at Kennedy Space Center, a blend of anticipation and precision engineering culminates in the third launch attempt of the Crew-8 mission to the International Space Station. This mission, a testament to human ingenuity and collaborative spirit, is not just another launch. It's a pivotal moment for SpaceX, NASA, and international space exploration. SpaceX and NASA are making final preparations for this eagerly awaited mission, which has seen its fair share of delays due to the whims of weather. The Crew-8 team, a diverse quartet of three men and one woman, is poised to embark on their celestial journey aboard the Crew Dragon spacecraft. The schedule is set, pre-boarding at 8 p.m. Eastern, with liftoff targeted for 10.53 p.m. Eastern. The journey to this point hasn't been without its hurdles. Previous attempts were thwarted by adverse weather conditions, but tonight, the forecast is more promising, showing a 75% chance of favorable weather. If the stars align and the launch proceeds, the Crew Dragon will make its way to the International Space Station, with docking expected early Tuesday. This mission is more than a routine crew rotation. It symbolizes the enduring spirit of international collaboration in space exploration. Amidst geopolitical tensions, the seamless integration of efforts, including NASA astronaut Tracy Dyson's upcoming launch on a Soyuz spacecraft on March 21st, underscores the global commitment to advancing human presence in space. The Crew-8 mission, therefore, is not just a technical achievement, but a beacon of unity and exploration. In the wake of a devastating wildfire in Lahaina, Hawaii, the community faces a new challenge. The potential contamination of its cherished ocean and the threat to its coral reef ecosystem. A blaze that consumed over 2,000 buildings has not only altered the landscape, but has also left behind a toxic legacy, including debris from burned plastics, lead paint, and lithium-ion batteries. This scenario has prompted a significant scientific inquiry to understand the environmental repercussions on the adjacent coral reefs, marking an unprecedented study in the wake of a large urban fire right next to a coral ecosystem. The urgency of the situation has led to a collaborative effort among scientists to assess the impact of the fire's aftermath on the ocean. With initial results anticipated in a month, this research aims to provide critical insights into the effects of chemicals and metals on the delicate reef ecosystems. The implications of these findings are vast, potentially informing guidelines for safe water entry for travelers and locals alike. Amidst these efforts, the Hawaii State House is deliberating on a bill that seeks to secure long-term funding for water quality monitoring. This legislative move underscores the importance of understanding the wildfire's long-term impact on both the ocean's health and seafood safety. In the meantime, state officials are advising the public to limit their exposure to the ocean and seafood as measures to mitigate harmful runoff, including debris removal and ash stabilization, are actively being implemented. Renowned journalist Walt Mossberg has weighed in on the situation, emphasizing the resilience of nature and its ability to heal if left undisturbed. This perspective brings a glimmer of hope amidst the challenges, suggesting that with time and respect for natural processes, recovery is possible. As the community of Lahaina navigates this complex aftermath, the collective efforts to understand and mitigate the environmental impact highlight a pivotal moment in the intersection of urban life and natural preservation. In a striking demonstration of climate change's impact, a research team from the University of Washington has unveiled findings on the rapid disintegration of the Pine Island Gletscher Ice Shelf in Antarctica, marking a concerning milestone in the study of glacier stability and sea level rise. The team's study, recently published in the journal AGU Advances, meticulously documents the formation of a 10.5-kilometer crack in the ice shelf, a phenomenon that stands as the fastest ice shelf fracture ever recorded, occurring in 2012. The backdrop of this research is the alarming potential for significant sea level rise, driven by the melting of vast amounts of frozen water trapped in the glaciers of Greenland and Antarctica. The study's lead author, Stephanie Olinger, draws a vivid comparison between the fracturing of the ice shelf 
and the shattering of glass, a metaphor that underscores the urgency of understanding these processes to accurately predict future sea level changes. The findings not only shed light on the speed and scale of ice shelf disintegration, but also emphasize the critical role these ice shelves play in stabilizing the Antarctic ice sheet. This revelation points to a pressing need for further research to grasp the full implications of ice shelf stability on projections of sea level rise. The rapid breakdown of the Pine Island Gletscher is a stark warning of the potential future impact of glacier melt on global sea levels, highlighting the importance of this research in the broader context of climate change and its effects. Mark your calendars for an astronomical spectacle, a rare total solar eclipse set to grace the skies on April 8, 2024. This celestial event, visible from Mexico to Canada, promises to captivate both the public and the scientific community with its stunning display and scientific significance. For the first time since 1979, Canada will witness a total eclipse, while the United States will experience its first since 2017. The eclipse's path of totality, where the moon completely obscures the sun, will traverse 15 U.S. states and five Canadian provinces, Key cities in its path include San Antonio, Montreal, and Gander, providing prime viewing locations for millions. This eclipse is not just a visual feast. It coincides with a period of increased solar activity. This makes the event particularly exciting for scientists and amateur sky watchers alike, offering unique insights into the sun's behavior. Several scientific projects are poised to take advantage of this opportunity, including ambitious plans to capture high-altitude images of the sun's corona from 50,000 feet above the Earth's surface. Safety is paramount when it comes to viewing this eclipse. Observers are reminded to use proper eye protection at all times, except during the brief moment of totality. This ensures a safe and enjoyable experience for all, while offering a unique opportunity to observe the sun's activity up close, especially important as we approach the solar maximum later this year. Imagine feeling the vibrations of live music coursing through your body and how it somehow always feels more impactful than listening to the same tune through your headphones. A recent study from the University of Zurich has delved into why that might be, revealing fascinating insights into our brain's response to live versus recorded music. The research team focused on the emotional reactions elicited by music, conducting an experiment with 27 participants. These individuals were exposed to piano pieces in two formats, live performances and recorded versions. What stood out was the brain activity monitored during these sessions. Specifically, the amygdala, a brain region pivotal in processing emotions, showed a more intense and consistent response during live music experiences. This heightened emotional impact of live music was attributed to the dynamic interaction between musicians and their audience. Such interactions allow for a unique feedback loop where musicians can adjust their performance in real time, amplifying the emotional connection and experience for everyone involved. This finding aligns with the hypothesis that humans have an evolutionary inclination towards live performances, craving the emotional depth they offer. The implications of these findings are profound, suggesting that the essence of live music might be rooted in our very evolution as social beings. The researchers are not stopping here, though. Plans are already underway to expand this study, aiming to replicate the experiment in a concert-like setting with a larger audience. This future research could further unravel the intricate relationship between live music and our emotional well-being. This has been your Daily Brief in Science. To read more about these stories, follow the links in the episode bio. You can also subscribe to these updates via email at www.brief.news. For more daily podcasts about the topics you love, visit brief.news forward slash podcasts. Tune in tomorrow. We'll be back with everything you need to know.